Hey everybody, Spoonfat here, and I thought I'd do a sort of exclusive video on how to make a um, USB with a couple of programs on it that can scan network traffic. Um, somebody asked me that. That's not really something I actually want to do already, but I thought, well, this would just be a um, sort of quick video on how to do that to um, hopefully keep you guys interested. Um, I got a couple of tools, I already have a lot of tabs open as you can see. Uh, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to that URL. So that's nearsoft.net slash util slash smsniff.html and it stands for SmartSniff. Um, there are a couple of things you need to know about sniffing traffic. Uh, especially on Windows. I'm, I'm keeping this a uh, Windows Center thing because it's nothing to do with Linux. Linux is far easier in, in that regard. On Windows you can sniff raw traffic. You can sniff traffic with the Windows Network Analyzer um, well, yeah, module or driver, or whatever you want to call it. And you have the WinPCAP driver. The raw traffic driver, you do not need to install anything for it, and Smart Sniff, Smart Sniff can use that, and I believe Wireshark can too, although I'm not 100% sure on that. Now, um, the raw traffic does come with a couple of um, limitations, and this is on the Windows XP Raider, you can do the raw sockets method, which you do not need anything for it but on a system with very limited um, possibilities as in your account doesn't have any possibilities you could definitely use this to at least capture some traffic but the outgoing UDP and ICMP packets are not captured sometimes you would want maybe to see that um, maybe like DNS requests or your pings or whatever they do not show up if you're on a Windows uh, XP SP1 outgoing packages are not captured at all it's a bug in there it's only on under that specific version and under Vista uh, it started too so under Vista without the SP1 so like a clean Vista you have the same problem no outgoing packages on the uh, Vista SP1 you see only UDP packages so that's the kind of limitations you have and on Windows 7 it seems to work fine until now so just keep these in mind when you're running these um, so yeah so let's just um, download these both actually so yes uh, alright yeah I'll make a new map I will call this USB sniffer so we got one and we got another one just for when you ever have a 64-bit version you can use the, that one that's specifically made for that uh, I'm gonna run these all later on um, angry IP scanner is not really a network sniffer but it will give you maybe some information that you would want to use so you're gonna go to um, this site angryip.org slash w slash home so we're gonna go to download uh, or you can alternatively go to slash w slash download uh, you got a new beta version but it's um, not stable and you need java for it and here you don't need anything for it I believe so yeah you can do install program from utils to create shortcuts but we don't need that so we're gonna do this one so we're gonna say save link as and get IP scan. Oh, that does not create. Ah, now it does. Oh, that's cool. What? Well, then, have you seen that? No. Allow. Otherwise, I cannot save it. Thank you. Alright, save. Alright, so we got those. Now we got network stuff, which is also a raw network scanner. So run this one as well. 
And now here we get to the um, drivers that I was talked about. You have the network monitor, that's it, network monitor, and it, and it installs drivers. Here you can see the system requirements, and it has 60 MB free hard disks, and it's only 6.5, so you need to download a lot. But if you go here, so you take this whole URL, microsoft.com slash whatever, you can read it. Or alternatively, you can Google it for Network Monitor 3.4 uh, Microsoft. Um, so that's one driver. You can use this one with Wireshark. Or you can use... Because what you see this one? Ah, oh, that's not one that I needed actually. Or you can use this one. That one should be there. And this one is a installer of Windows driver plus DLLs. Um, as I'm making this, I'm kind of wondering if it's possible to make a USB which has uh, Wireshark on it, has the Win PCAP on it as well, and configure Wireshark to look for the Win PCAP driver in there. Not quite sure if that will work because I believe the, the Win PCAP needs to be run as a service inside of Windows. But the first time you run this with PCAP module, you need administrator rights. So um, I'm going to take a quick look into it, but uh, for my reasoning, um, it cannot be done. That's why I think they made the special air PCAP, which you can see on the right here. They, they made that on their own. I think they made a custom uh, circuit board that has it, but I'm not sure. So, but that's what I'm thinking because otherwise why would it cost five hundred seventy dollars so those two options you have uh, is by the way is the win pcap site win pcap.org and you can find everything there I'm just gonna close these two I was gonna close that one too oh my browser does not respond no that's what I said All right, no doesn't matter anyway if you happen to be on a computer which has WinPCAP installed, like per accident or something. You can run, um, my browser is now crashing, so I can select it, but you can run that command. Anybody can run that command. You do not have to be administrator, only the first time. So you run the command sc dot, the, in the command prompt, sc uh, space config space mpf space start e equals, that needs to be together, and then space auto. If you do that like that, you're done. It's only on a, a Vista you need to run as administrator. Uh, this one can well, stop, please, because it's very annoying. Uh, yep, let's go. Alright then, so let me show you the programs that you can just copy on your... Um, these you can just all copy. I'll just open them up. But as you can see, you only need that one. And it's the same here. So I'm just going to extract them to there. Extract them there. Alright, so we have all the programs we need. You can also copy them, of course, like that. You have everything you need. I'll start with IP scan. This is how IP scan is looking. So you get your own host name here. Um, you can say here, use them for both. And you can change this, of course, to a one. You can use this to a two five five, and we'll just uh, start. And as you can see, mm -hmm. let's see. So here you can see what you can do. Show G details. So I show you can do a lot of stuff from this. You can even open it in web browsers and stuff like that. 
that's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you. Right. Uh, delete from list that host, please. Thank you. So the only three that are up are these. I um, believe you can watch one of this. Yeah. So uh, sorry. From all of them, I want to show the computer name. Doesn't work like that. Oh, right. That sucks. So what you could do, well, that you can do. So you can look at them all, and this one is in workgroup, for example. Uh, you can make each. There's no username. It's too bad. But there you can go. You can view everything from NetBIOS. If you double click, you know you can see all the information you need. And open ports not really in here, but that's not what this thing is actually very good at. Um, so yeah, so that's Angry IP Scanner. Um, ah. I thought uh, port range, uh, no ports, like the port 80, 21, 22, and 80, 80, and 43, and 10. Ah, what the heck? 23 for sake. Alright, right, then, go. Now I need to rescan my piece. There we go. This one only has port 21 open, which is not true because port 80 is also open, but that doesn't matter. Or did I not do them correctly actually? It's a comma separated. Yeah, so no, that's. Port 80 is actually open this one, but all right, that doesn't matter. So that's one utility you can use. It's not really network sniffer, but it's something you can use to see which uh, IPs or at least which computers are on the network. All right, so this one can go. Let's start up smart sniff. So smart sniff. Yes. Sadly, this one needs administrator privileges. That's that sucks in all these. You cannot have actually one that is without the administrator privileges. So, yeah. Anyway, we'll start capture. And you can, I need to select which one. Um, I'm tempted to go with this one because I think that one is really the one for my host system. And here you can see the raw sockets method. As you can see, this one is network monitor driver, this is for Windows, and that's the WinP cap packager driver, but we don't have that. Uh, I think I need to do that one. Now, if I were to start up a browser, I only have Pill Moon these days. And it said it was not my main browser, alright. No problem. Yeah, I need the other one. I thought so. Alright, so capture and file. Um, take that one. Go. Uh, do that. There we go. So as you can see, um, that IP address is actually of my host, so now you can see how everything is done. But here you can see, you know, traffic, what's been going on, here you can see it here, here you can see the safe browsing of Google, so that's UDP messages. Which you can see here. Is it safe to browse this? Blah blah blah. blah. I goddamn say browsing clients with Google. Google's everywhere, seriously. Um, anyway, um, you can 
throw these reports up. Uh, you can have a, actually you have a lot of a lot of options. Um, you can say choose columns, and I just have them all on. But you can also say process, process, process. So we'll do OK, and then I'll show you what you can see because this one. Hopefully, if I I'll generate another site. Let's so. Ah, damn it! That's too bad. So uh, sometimes it's I think it's when you have the other drivers installed, you can see which process is actually using it, and how it's called, and which user, and then the local MAC, and that sort of thing, IP, remote IP. But that's not happening with the raw packages, which is okay. It's not too bad. But here you can see all kinds of domain requests, version check for add-ons I have no idea why my site is doing that but sounds about right this one yeah this is the YouTube embedding series oh uh, that's one is for uh, right I know already which one it is now you can see how much gets loaded off my site actually um, this is NetBIOS that's also pretty cool actually because you can see here, for example, that one is not a um, computer in my network. It's just sending out a message, where are you, who are you? Which is taken on by my computer here. Um, anyway, here you can see the domain request going out for spoonfed.org. And here you can see it being loaded up. And get user, my themes. So that's... A cool um, oh that cookie should be gone because I don't even use it anymore. All right, I'll delete that. No problem. Um, yeah, so I hope you can use this as your sniffer. Uh, stop capture. Yes, oh, stop capture. Um, this is the config file which. Uh, and I think it hosts like a couple of options. Basically, here you have the adapter name. This will get uh, gets like changed each time you boot it up. So it's no worry. Not something you have to change. Ah, there we go. Anyway, network stuff. Um, yeah, that's the one. And there we go. We got a lot of tools with this one, and I like this one the best for the purpose that I think the user is asking me for, or at least what I'm thinking he wants. Uh, you got you can put up a TCP server and TCP client, but that's not something you would have to do because we want to go here, and you can scan here everything you want to do. So um, all the options <clears throat> you can use are uh, right here. You can use the IP port list. Um, you can just do say the following IPs or IPs in file. You can say the following ports, or ports of file, and CGI list. And you can select here if you want to do TCP, UDP, ICMP, or CGI, or do only scan. Um, only pingable servers, so if they can't, if you can't ping them, don't scan them. Random order is well, yeah, you could do that. Um, I mean, it makes the traffic if somebody else is analyzing the traffic makes it seem a lot less uh, suspicious. So I would do that. Um, you can use a proxy, of course, and then you can just start it here, and it will scan the ports, as it were. So. Do that way, and you can it's the same here, but then you start with a different uh, radio button selected. ICMP is basically ping, so see if you can ping wherever you want to go. Um, you can see here which process ID is doing what. I'll just make this a lot bigger. 
Um, that's a problem. Again, yeah, right. Like so. So you can see here what the process path is, what the status it was in, what the port is. So Pill Moon is listening on that port, on this port actually on localhost. Uh, some services are idle. Port 80, they're waiting for something. I'm not quite sure what this one is, but um, looks to me like it's one of these Pill Moon ones that are talking to some site. A lot of Pill Moon ones, as you can see. So, uh, UDP table, not much going on right here. Normal IP table, uh, got a couple, a lot of this is VMware. Stats, uh, field attempts, you know, you can get a lot of information out of these. How many times you've been pinged, IP stats, what's going on. And you can also refresh now every time, of course. Um, this says here available only for administrators. I'm currently an administrator, but I'm not running it as an administrator, so that's pretty funny that it shows this. We got the interactive, and that's to create a transparent proxy. So you create a proxy and you tell somebody else to connect to this proxy, and then you can see what's going on. And we got the raw package once, and that's the one that you want. You see, there are a lot of options you can set. Um, but yeah, I would suggest this one. So that's this one or that one instead of you need the IP in the port source and the same for destination. Um, quite, yeah, you can see here, yes. And that's what I thought. They wanna put it in promiscuous mode. And if I say no, that's what I thought. But it says here raw package packets and it doesn't work. That's too bad. Yeah, that's what I thought. Alright, so that's too bad. So you can use the package capturing of this one. You can uh, resolve hosts, get some information for whois. Uh, you can send um, an X request protocol, I think it is. Address request protocol, yeah. And if you send the ARP, you can get the MAC address back. Uh, this is the computer's IP, so you can see what your outside IP is. I'm not going to do right now, and you can do the wake on LAN stuff. Um, so you can find out which computers are in your network and then initiate. Um, oh, sorry, wake here. You can wake up computers. And that's it for network stuff. So the only sniffer. You can do this one. Now I have been holding out on you because there is actually another option. That's why shark. Um, that's the wrong one, I think. Yes, this one. I thought I was going to say download. And then you have the portable apps there. You say save file. You save that. Now, actually, when this is done, you're going to run that and you're going to install it on your USB. And then you get a couple of files on your USB, which include the Wireshark application. Which you can use to, well, basically start up Wireshark wherever you are. And with that, you can capture a lot of packets. And you can also use the um, raw packets 
uh, option as it were. So I hope that um, gives you some options at least and some stuff that you can use to get uh, wire network sniffers on a USB stick for um, a Windows setting. Um, I can show you install of course but I'm not going to install it on a USB. Anyway, before this, you set drive letter of your USB, um, E for example, or uh, G or whatever. And then that's it. You're going to do install and then you can see some files, So, which I actually can do. Is, is that not valid? Well, I'll do it like so. You're gonna get this on on your um, USB stick. So I'll just wait till it's done. Finish and you start this up. And here you can see that the MPF driver is not running, so you might have trouble. Well, that's true. No interface. That's what I thought. Usually, you need the Win P cap to capture but you know you might get lucky and actually get something there ah, that's too bad I cannot find anything yeah that sucks alright um, that's it for me I'm just looking in to this what they've done they've included an installer so you can actually run the installer from um, the portable you can do that that's always a good one what you actually need administrative privileges for this so now if I run Wireshark uh, yeah, close. I get interface list and I'll take that one and then do start and I'll probably get nothing at least very little and this is a the NetBIOS thing again but I'll start up the browser and I'll do a that one, close it. And here you can see all the traffic that's going on. So um, that's it for Wireshark and um, good about saving. I'll just delete it actually. No, I just want to delete it. Yes, downloads. Leads. Yes. Go. All right. So that's it for the um, portable network sniffers and other uh, network-related options.